One of my favorite things about Vinland Saga is the fact that characters usually don't hide who they are. When you look at Snake explaining who he or his men are, he basically says he's a piece of garbage, he kills and he's not a good person. But the biggest thing with Kiro, our master, who is constantly trying to pretend that he is this good person because he buys slaves and says if you work for me I'll give you your freedom, but a good slave master would buy and then set free. He profits off of people who are indebted to him, and the fact that in episode 20 of season 2 he gets a taste of his own medicine as they're all fleeing for their life after the retreat order is given, the fact that he's so mad saying, you know, you have to fight for me, you have to do this, and this poor bastard saying, the only reason we're here is because we're indebted to you. This isn't out of loyalty, this is because you hold our debt over our heads, and this is the only way you could get us to fight. It sucks ass that King Canute's here to steal your land, but this is the same bullshit that you did to us our entire life. And the fact that for the first time, Ever since having the ability to buy slaves or force debt over other people's heads, we had a man who felt like he was on top of the world and was this kind gentleman have to recognize and look himself in the mirror and say, maybe I'm not all I crack up to be, and you'll love to see it. Full live reaction to P-Clan Saga episode 20 is available on my Patreon if you do want to see my full uncut thoughts. This episode lived up to the title, which was Pain, and honestly, this is probably going to be, I'm going to assume everyone else is going to say they cried, they were depressed. It was heartbreaking, but I kind of was happy to see our girl finally get out of this hell-forsaken world. And I'm not saying that to be cold, I'm just saying after not only witnessing your child be ripped away from you, the unborn child inside of you get basically aborted because you were kicked to near death, the fact that you had to be reunited with your husband who was such a broken man and you had to watch him die as you tried to find freedom, I mean, can you really just say, let's have a second love, let's find my way to love Anar and go off and find a peaceful world? No. At the end of the day, I kind of fell at peace when she said I only came back to say thank you because you were amazing. Because this world sucks ass. This is a world where you gotta look at it when, like, the episode kicks off. You have Snake and his men, and one of his men is literally saying, I've killed, I think he said, 13 people. I like killing. This is what this world is. And we see him shaking in his boots because the Jean Vikings are literally a billion times worse and enjoy killing a billion times more. Hell, Thorfinn at the end of this episode said, he used to think the people who fled to Iceland to escape war were pathetic. Now he looks at them as brilliant people because who wants to be a part of a war-filled world? At the end of the day, this is a time period that's not going to change overnight, and characters like Thorfinn are one in a billion, it feels like. And these types of people are the reason the world eventually does start to change for the better. But at the end of the day, do you really want to go after having to be a sex plaything to your master because he wanted to use you as a comfort source when you had no feelings for him other than I don't want to get beat, I don't want to not get fed because I don't sleep with my master. You get beaten to the point of near death, you lose your family, and when you're reunited with them, you lose them in an even more brutal fashion. The girl's life was living hell, how do you come back from that? Why would you even want to come back from that? Even if this afterlife isn't real, and the vision she's seeing of Gardar and her kids are just a hallucination, that still is arguably the most peaceful thing she's had ever since Gardar left off her war. And that's heartbreaking as can be, and it, it crushes my heart. Seeing them try to bring her back, and the rage, and just the fact that this is one of the most brilliant moments Thorfinn's had, and it, it hurts me so much. When he sees that the Master's still alive, that, that rage, we've seen that rage at the beginning of Season 1 when Thorfinn wanted to kill Aslad because what you did to my father, you know, it just, it turned him into the psycho monster that he grew up throughout Season 1. And the fact that he, he tries to pull him back but that rage is too strong, he has to punch him once and say, bro, like... I've been there, I've been in your exact shoes and it kills you. The fact that he he's able to connect with that type of pain really shows not only how far he's grown over the course of these two seasons, but how much he's suffered over the course of these two seasons. And honestly, it's a badass moment, but goddamn, like the fact that the final moments of this episode are Thorfinn telling our boy who's like, please just come back to your home, see your mother again, just Let's run away from this war. And the fact that he says, King Canute probably only brought about a hundred men. Don't worry, I can come back alive. Like, that is some Chad energy. But I love the fact that that's not him saying, I'm going to go kill a hundred men. No, he's not a killer anymore. Instead, if he can save even one more person's life, 
he wants to do that. And that's the type of character Thorfinn is clearly going to be going forward. He is a badass. He can clearly kick ass and take names, but he's not going to use violence to hurt because he can, but more so as a last resort. He punches Einar because if he didn't, he would do something that would spiral him into the point of what we saw Thorfinn in season one. He will fight to defend himself to get to King Canute to talk to him, but he's not going to kill King Canute to, to, you know, stop violence because violence just breeds more violence. It's something that he's accepted given the hell he's been through. And I love the fact that the characterization of someone like Thorfinn is literally like top three character energy for me. Like, it's just absolutely insane how well written he is. But the fact that this episode blended an amazing action sequence, which lasted about eight, ten minutes of the episode. The fact that we have the parting scene with Arnie, just, she deserves so much better than this world gave her. And then you have just the final moments with Einar and Thorfinn. It's absolutely brilliant energy. Every time Thorfinn gives the speech about Vinland, about how there's this peaceful world, it sends sh like shivers up my spine. I'm chilled just when he talks about it. And at this point, the most peaceful war no war will ever come, you'll always be happy, is honestly the afterlife. That's what it feels like at this point. But you gotta love that, honestly, I'm not sure if it's the only, I'm the only one feeling it, but I want someone like Thorfinn to read a story like that at my funeral, being like, bro, here's this peaceful land that you can go to where everything's perfect. Like, goddamn. Like, I need to I need to see a live reading of that. Like, sometimes, like, Mappa, like, I know Aaron Yeager's VA when he was doing the speech in past recently, he did, like, a live reading of that. I need to have Thorfinn's VA do, like, a live reading of this Vinland speech because it just sends chills up my spine. Arnie's VA went above and beyond. She absolutely crushed it. It broke my heart when she was just mumbling and muttering but being so thankful but just so at peace to pass on. It's just, it was so, it was so bad. It was so bad but it was so good. The action incredible. I think they rotoscoped one of the fights which looked really good. But Snake is fast. I mean, we knew that because he matched Thorfinn's speed, but he was fast going around, but he actually would have died had the men not turned around to protect the king because of, well, Thorgil being Thorgil. And he looked like he had very little left in the tank when he finally caught his breath, so I'm pretty sure Snake would have died in this battle, which I think everyone more or less expected after last week. But the fact that Thorgil, I mean, had Canute not been as skilled as he was, he would have died. He would have cut his head off there. And I think had Olmar been more of a strong warrior, I think it's guaranteed Canute would have died in that moment had there been at least one other warrior with him, because not only did he cut down the two guards with him, the fact that he not only shattered his sword, he probably sprained his goddamn arm, and man, the kicks and just the fact that you're trying to choke him out, the eye goes away, it was savage, and it's kind of hilarious, just... It's like perfect for Thorkel because he just casually comes out of the water, cuts down two guards, kicks the king a bunch and almost kills him and then just casually swims away like nothing happened. Like that's just the most like crazy energy in the show. And honestly, Thorkel would be proud. It's just an incredible episode across the board. Taste of your own medicine. Basically Snake saying you're not going to get off this easy by dying. Like he is going to understand now what it was like to be in a position of power where you force things over people's heads saying, you know, I'm being nice. You have this debt to me. I'll let you be free 10 years from now if you work for me. It's better than a lot of slave masters in this world, but it doesn't change the fact that he profited off of people's lack of freedom. And it's crazy to see the fact that a single man on the battlefield with this almost psycho laugh could get through to him seemingly. And now whatever Canute has in store, he'll have in store for him. Let me know what you thought of this wonderful Vinland Saga episode down below. Drop a like if you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new around here. Ring that bell, of course. You can get notified when I upload on the channel. And like I mentioned, full live reaction to this episode is available on my Patreon. And while you're there, you can also get a video shout out. So today we have If Cho, Jenny Liu, Isaac Farnsworth, and James Wright. So I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care and have a good one.